and some pretty normal bands going down. No big shocks with the Renekton Oriana or the Zed. Yeah, the Renekton coming down for Impact, I mean, it's a strong laning champion. Uh, we saw that priority from the Chinese teams at the World Championship, and that really bled over into a lot of these other squads as well. Lee Sin taken out, Helios is champion of choice. He does have a pretty shallow champion pool, or at least he has in the past. He did, yeah. Uh, Elise Jarvin and Lee Sin rounding out, but mostly Lee Sin, his pickup right there. So trying to make right. him a bit uncomfortable. Well, I think the Jarvin's gonna be a very uh, appealing choice possibly for Helios. We've seen him play a lot of that in the past too. It's, but like you mentioned, he's had, he has a relatively small pool. So as he used kind of this time off, I suppose you could say quote unquote to broaden that a bit, to deepen the pool, I suppose. You definitely don't want to run next to the pool. That's just dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, just step and fall and crack your head. Not, to the, not next to the Helios pool, because it's extra shallow, so that's, <laughs> that is a dangerous pool to run next to. There's a Jax ban. Not a surprise. I mean, yeah. they want to stop Shy from carrying. He's the real weapon on the team right now, the most dangerous player on Frost as of this point in time. He's and a of course, specialist. a ridiculous Jax player, but they're going to go ahead and take that Corky as the first pick for yeah. space. Yeah, Corky's going to be really contested now, too, again, because of those Trinity Force buffs. Corky's seen like a big, big resurgence, and for good reason. So the first two picks for SK Telecom are going to be, and there we go, yeah. All right, Zyra, Mondu, a fantastic, well, okay, here's Mondu as Zyra. I feel like in any game you watch Mondu play Zyra, you will be at the same time amazed and horrified. <laughs> it's because so true. Because he will either, he will, uh, at one second, he'll be making like the most amazing plays on Zyra you've ever seen, and then like two seconds later, like, oh, that was, that was really bad. Why but, were you standing there getting caught? But I'm, yeah, exactly, but I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, because you know what? All supports should know this. Zyra is a hard champion to pick up if you already are very familiar and used to the other support. She's very different. I've spent a lot of the time over the last month actually learning Zyra too, and it's it's a very different world. Zyra and the other champ, the other support champion. So you can't blame him. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And they're actually going to take this Vi away from Bengi right here. Okay. That well, is saw what he did with Vi at the World Championships. Oh yeah, and in the uh, Champion Summer Finals as well when he re kind of revived this pick in Korea. Yeah. Only pretty much alternate, and Araneo using it around the world at the time, but. Bengi bringing it back in a big way, and it really filtered out to the other Korean teams from there. And now that Grog is picked for Rapid Star, uh, this has been a champion Rapid Star has been quite comfortable with. Yep. Uh, I am a bit surprised that they banned the Orianna if they're planning on picking that Grogus. The all-in kill potential at level six is quite high for that Grogus. Yeah. It may be a signal, though, We'll have to see. Wow, an Aurelia uh, pick. Okay. We, you know? we theorized about this pick coming back with Trinity Force, but we yeah. haven't really seen it yet. It didn't come out at Worlds. Well, if anything, I mean, he's got a great uh, Aurelia player to learn from if, if uh, Flame's been teaching Shy the Aurelia tricks. And I would be a lot less surprised to see Singe to pick up. And Thresh for Mad Life, too, which is pretty strong. Well, I'm curious as to why we haven't seen uh, this Nidalee pickup yet. We know that Nidalee yeah. has been one of the hot picks so far. I think Faker's going to take it. I mean, Ezreal Nidalee has been really popular in the qualifiers up to this point. The combination of True Shot Barrage and the Spear, actually, are a way that teams have been really chunking down somebody on the other team. It, like, near one-shots you later on in the game. So, wouldn't be surprised at all to see Faker grab that Nidalee. Yeah, Sona, a champion that Mad Life's comfortable on, but he will be swapping over, and it, oh, we will yeah. be seeing those Mad Life hooks this game. Oh, that was that was very sad for me. Well, Mad Life, I feel like Sona's a real comfort pick for him right now. Oh, and the lock-in on LeBlanc for Faker. Well, oh, okay. Got, now, Faker did say hot shot GG's LeBlanc was better. But <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know? Wow. Crowd going nuts. However, yeah. this may be a mistake. SK nuts. Telecom T1. So Rapid Star is very comfortable in a 1v2 lane as Gracchus. Yeah. And however, Faker has played LeBlanc into 1v2 lanes himself and been quite successful. He's one of the few players that I've seen be proficient on that. Yep. But we'll probably see that lane swap here uh, from CJ Frost. In fact, I was told that Rapid Star is only comfortable Whoa in a 1v2 lane on Gragas. Everybody got really skinny. It's that uh, healthy American food that SK Telecom's <laughs> been eating for the last month. And CJ, uh, maybe they've just been going to McDonald's a lot or something, who knows. But there we go. As you can see, the rosters on SK Telecom. Impact playing Shen, Bengi on Jarvin the fourth, Faker on LeBlanc, can't wait to see that. Piglet on Ezreal, Mondu on Zyra, 
Meanwhile, on CJ Frost, we've got Mad Life playing Sona. Space on Corky, very popular since the Trinity Force buffs, of course. Rapid Star on his comfort pick, Ragus. Helios is going to be playing that Vi, and then Shy on Aurelia. The game is loading up, guys. And here we go, game one. We're back. Back with the Korean League of Legends. Rain Bros in action once again. Check it out. There's Mark Noon. Gang by Mom walking to their seats there. <laughs> Down in front. Down in front. We can't see the stage. All right, let's get in the game. You know, I was talking to Gank my mom before the matches today about his bow tie, and he told me two interesting things about that. One's that he wears a bow tie because he's a big Doctor Who fan, actually. That's the reason for the bow tie. And he also said he would give me one as a gift, too, the next time he saw me. So maybe I'll be wearing the Doctor Who bow tie next time. We'll see. Ganked by bow tie. Ganked by bow tie. Okay, well. He's going to, like, hop in his TARDIS and <laughs> go home after the match, I guess. Of course, time traveling phone booth is what I speak. Of. All right. So. Um, Mandu starting with some interesting masteries this time. Typically, he goes 122.7 on Zyra, but he actually has the Biscuit and Scouter this time, so he's mixing it up for a bit more utility this time around. You know, the 113.16 is so Many really popular with a lot of support players in Korea, and just around the world. It's, it's I, I call it the brawler masteries because you can really trade a lot more aggressively with that, and you know against a Sona, you're going to be getting poked. And there we go, there's that ward. SK Telecom likes to put the ward between the second and third turrets as opposed to the Ozone ward, which goes right in front of that second turret between the first and second turrets. Yeah. Gives you a little bit more advanced warning, but they're looking for that lane swap. They know, or have a strong suspicion, I should say, that it's going to be coming in quite early. Rapid star, don't face that push. Oh, you got it with the missing shot. There it is. There we go, coming in, gets with the standard rapid star. There's a taunt, they get the taunt on the rapid star. First blood. Goes to Faker, yeah. disaster for CJ Frost. That's about as bad as it can get. That is pretty much exactly as bad as it can get. They're going Why to get the blue stay? buff as well. Man. And that I wonder, stuff. I didn't see if he had skilled already, but I mean, that was a nice, aggressive taunt flash right there coming in from Impact, and Faker is now incredibly dangerous in that mid lane. Yeah, certainly will be. He's gonna get a really good head start, a little bit extra CS. Meanwhile, Shy backing off just a little bit. He's gonna have to play in that 2v1 and talk to Pokemon with that Q. I'm so excited to see Aurelia again. Yeah. That Jax ban out. They still want Shy to play on that carry, and that's exactly what they're going to get. Rapid Star already eating some harass in this mid lane. This is only the second time in a professional match we've seen Faker play LeBlanc. And, well, the the first first time, and the first time yeah. since the rework, actually, as well. Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, the first time we saw Faker play LeBlanc, that made, like, it was, like, half the front page of the LOL subreddit was Faker highlights. <laughs> it was a pretty successful outing for him. It was. It, mildly. it was pretty much a 20-minute surrender, yeah. oh, 11 kills, and already. my, oh, my, Rapid Star really taking it. Yeah, he's not going to have an easy time, and Rapid Star is one of those more emotional players, too. I mean, and he knows that pretty much every game right now, he's fighting for that roster spot. I mean, if he's not careful, he may up, end up in like Esports Heaven along with everybody else, Cloud Templar, Ring Troll, you know. Well, All those I mean, guys, we'll see. Rapid Star's had a really rough time of it. Yeah, um, he has. His laning has never been particularly strong, and he kind of got by in season two on the strength of his team fighting. Yeah. But as laning became more and more important and significant to the outcome of the game in season three, uh, he really fell off. In fact, he had the lowest CS per minute out of any mid laner in Champion Summer, uh, while Faker had the most. So we're looking at a pretty one-sided matchup statistically in terms of that laning phase in this game. And Helios waiting around for a long time. That top lane, thinking about maybe trying to queue over the wall and get a gank, but I don't think he can make Oh, they're going in onto, uh, onto space right now. Has to use a slash. Ignite ticking down Bengi. One last Q should do it. There's a barrier. Can they chase him down? Bengi a bit low. Oh, he juiced the Q, but an auto will finish him off. Mad Life in a little bit of trouble. Now the Q nearly taking down Bengi, but he will live. Meanwhile, Shy getting low in that top lane as well. There's a taunt just barely missing Mad Life. 
And oh, that man. gank right there. Bengi with the great patience on the barrier, walking all the way out, waiting for it to fall down, and yeah. then picking up that kill. Time. SK Telecom continues to harass heavily, and they've done such a good job of poking in the top lane. So if we look at the difference right there, we saw a similar situation, but the poke coming out of that Zyra and uh, Ezreal combo got Shy low enough that they weren't able to do that jungle top lane 2v2 all in that we saw coming from SK Telecom, and that's going to be hugely problematic for Frost to keep that top tower up and operational. Faker already heading back He's going for that Deathfire Grasp, grabbing that Codex quite early on yep. in this game. Five minutes, it's only going to be more harass yeah, for Faker in the mid lane. It's not going to get any easier for Rapid Star, absolutely. Only with that Ring Crystal and Flask and Fairy Charm right now. And Faker almost doubling the CS already, too. I mean, really, it's even without that level one death, you, this is kind of what you'd expect from Faker. I mean, with his performance that he's shown for us, it's been pretty amazing and a lot of damage on the side. Oh, man, Mondu gets the kill with the plant from the Q. You need to respect the damage that Syra does or that's just gonna happen. That was actually an incredibly strong play from Mondu right yeah. there. Helios now in trouble, Bengi. That's why Zyra's so fun, man. Looking out from the tri brush right there. Taking oh, some harass, Helios. they're going for it. Got snared, gonna get the dive. Helios has no chance of making it out, even with the Q, or maybe he does, I spoke too soon. No, Ezreal chases him down. Piglet gets that kill. So everybody on SK Telecom, except for Impact right now, already has a kill at six minutes. Things are not looking good for Frost. Oh, and there's really not much they're going to be able to do at this point. I, I mean, we're so. talking about a 3K gold difference. It's six minutes into this game. And Mondu, one of the most amazing things about him as a Zyrek player is he almost never misses that Q. Yeah. If you watch this guy in lane, uh, I was watching him during uh, the World Championship Finals, and uh, ooh, Shy maybe, oh, uh, they're gonna pull out. You know, Mondu's a little bit low. Yeah, otherwise. I was watching him during the World Championship Finals, and I think I counted just when the camera was on him that he hit seven Qs in a row against wow. uh, Tabe and Uzi. And this is one of the very scary things about him as a Zyra player is he's such, so good at predicting where you're going to be. And Shy just found that out the hard way. What a great seed behind that turret. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great things about Zyra as well is that she has that long range, tiny little damage that she can put on someone who's fleeing and not quite respecting the range of that plant. I mean. Zyra is so strong right now. I mean, if, you, if you're a support player in the pro scene and you can't play Zyra, you need to really learn Zyra. Uh, Faker going deep on Rapid Star, just giving him a little poke right oh, there. Rapid Star's in trouble. Turret does lock onto Faker a little bit. Rapid Star very low. He still gets the kill, and Faker escapes with that passive. And that's just the danger of playing against someone like Faker, especially on a champion like LeBlanc. <laughs> just tapping Helios yeah. a bit right there. Bengi in from the side, and now they're going to be going for that blue steel. I don't think there's anything that's really going to prevent Shy. them from doing it. Shy could try, but I don't know. I don't think that'd be a good idea. I'm just going to let Baker have that one. And it's pretty much pure domination out of the Season 3 World Champions right now. I mean, I, I can't say this is surprising. Frost still adjusting, of course, to their roster oh, shifts. Yeah. And no doubt they've been practicing a lot with Mock Dune and Gank by Mom as well, but right. it's, um, they probably took a little bit of a break too. Well, SK Telecom's been going gangbusters at the World Championship, so they're definitely a finely tuned machine right now, only yeah. getting back from Korea I'm sure a few days ago. I actually saw them leave the hotel at the World Championship, I believe, the day, the night after they won. They pretty much immediately left in order to prepare for this tournament. So. They were like, all right, when you get back, 20 minute nap, and then we're gonna start practicing again. <laughs> that's that's game Telecom style, and oh, they miss. Mandu doesn't quite get the snare or the slow. But that's okay, I mean, they've held shy to a, a very minimal amount of CS. I mean, look at Impact right now, even having to 1v2, this entire game, he's still near doubling shy CS. Well, credit to Frost, too. They dealt with the blue steel by getting Rapid Star. The blue from SK Telecom, they used the they fact did. that they took down that turret and had that lane pressure going in order to cover themselves. Good warding 
throughout that river to pick that up as well. So they're trying to get Rapid Star back in this game, but he's falling pretty desperately behind on CS. In addition yeah. to those two kills that Faker already has over him, Helios now coming in. Oh, and Bengi is right over the wall. They're going to jump on the Mondu. Bengi comes over, gets the knock up on the Helios. His desire ultimate crescendo over the top from Mad Life, but CJ on the run already. Space coming over the wall with the Valkyrie having to stutter step backwards. He will live, but they're not quite able to get the kill on the impact after he came in. And it looks like it's going to be a 2 0 for SK Telecom and maybe a turret 2 0. Piglet needs to be a bit careful. Well, that was a pretty big lack of respect for the Shen ultimate there coming in from Frost. Faker doing a little bit of a roam. Coming back, he did get some taps onto Rapid Star, keeping him in that mid lane. SK Telecom gets another turret, and now it's over 5K gold difference at 10 minutes into this game. Faker, oh, Faker over the wall. wall. He wants Rapid Star, and there's the chains. Can he get him? Oh, he backs off Rapid Star, barely lives. Mad Life saving the day. Space is there, but they can't quite chase the block down. A bit too slippery. She just slaps those little like shoulder things on her cape and just flies away. <laughs> that's how it works. That's right. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Scientifically, that's how I'd explain it. Oh boy. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to say about this game, though. It's just complete lane domination coming out of uh, SK Telecom well, right if, here. If I was CJ Frost, I know what I'd say about the game, but I can't say that on the stream. <laughs> it's inappropriate. That's right. There are children watching. That's right. Children and small animals. Frankly, adults too just can't. They aren't ready for it. And there's a dragon for SK Telecom. And just a just such clean rotations right there coming out of SKT. Coming back again for that dragon, moving to the other side of the map. Now that they've got both turrets in that top lane down, and Faker covering that mid, making sure everything is nice and pushed up. So that'll be the first dragon of the game here at 11 minutes. Yep, that's right. Now the pressure coming into the bot turret. I mean, you can see the difference in the global gold coming out right now and just the difference between space and piglet. And we do have Helios rotating down to the bot lane. Piglet crew, though, backing off because of that minion wave. And so they should be fairly safe. They do have a ward in that bottom brush as well, so Helios not going to be able to sneak up with any sort of lane gank. But the lane's never going to be pushed that far up anyway. Here we go, this coming time. over to the side. Helio's still there. Faker yeah. has actually been surprisingly passive about roaming this game, considering how far in advance he's gotten. But with the rest of his team winning this hard, he doesn't really need to, as long as he can continue to pin Rapid Star into that mid lane. Well, now it's like one of those games that you play where you know you get this lead where they don't have any kills, and you start to play extra safe, so they just like never get a kill. You well, just want to get that perfect game. It's also just really safe for SK Telecom right now, because when they're as far ahead as they are in all their individual lanes. As long as they push all the lanes simultaneously, there's no real reaction that Frost can have. Yeah. Uh, the choices are pretty much lose their turrets. Oh, man. Just dodging that one. So wow. hard to hit LeBlanc with that, but Helios coming in. Rapids are trying to bait a little bit. W up for Baker. Rapids are has to flash. Oh, man. Helios not even able to get there in time. Wow. Bit of a miscommunication there, I gotta say, because I think Helios may wanted to may wanted to have gone in on that one. Well, this is this is just kind of a train wreck. Yeah. Uh, you'll also a notice hype train wreck. A <laughs> hype train wreck. <laughs> uh, you'll also notice there's a ward there above the uh, lower side of the river brush right there for Faker, and that's the kind of ward that you want to put if you're going to be facing a Vi, because she has that ball breaker. Oh, right. here's, here's the action! No countering the Zyro, but Mondu does go down. Mad Life very low, but Piglet has to run. They got a little bit over eager with that one. Nice response though for Mad Life, saving it. Meanwhile, Shy in trouble. There's the knockup. He's not going to make it out. Rapid Star throwing in a barrel nearly takes out Faker. No escape once again. 0-1 right now for Faker. And we're looking at Impact slicing away at an inhibitor turret at yeah, only 13 minutes into this game. We're looking at a possible like 15 minute inhibitor here. That's pretty brutal for CJ Frost. Yeah, especially since Piglet is about to go back and get that Trinity Force as well. Yeah. DFG nearly complete for Faker already. Opts for a little bit of extra tankiness with the extra Doran's Blade. Or Doran's Ring, rather. And Piglet going to go ahead and take this one down. Yep, should get it. Piglet also going for that Trinity Force. Blue build Ezreal is not really seen too much anymore. 
And it looks like he'll have to back off just as the turf lives. But, ooh, Baker, a lot of damage onto Helios. Helios, not very tanky at all, with just that Sightstone and Kindle Gem right now. I mean, there's absolutely nothing you can do against Baker at this point. You no. gave him that first blood at level one. He's now 30 CS up on a Gragas as LeBlanc. A pretty yeah. extraordinary mark. And Rapid Star getting that turret. chalice for a bit of magic resist, but still having quite a few problems. Red goes over to Bengi, and the buff steal. Oh, man. Well, the thing doa, is, doa, doa. This the, is the slaughter. I know. But the thing is, is that you really need Helios, you really need Vi to be successful in the early game. I mean, if she's not tanky when it gets to the mid and late game, she's just not really going to be able to make an impact in the game. Well, the other trouble with Vi right here is that with Vi, uh, it's extremely helpful to have earlier boots of mobility. Yeah. Uh, because you really need to make plays in lane and use that range on the Vault Breaker in order to set up lanes for kills. If you have to go tanky or get the, uh, the Kindle Gem earlier on or before your boots of mobility, uh, you're just going to be making less plays across the map. And if you get behind this buy, it's very difficult to live. Because if you try to use Assault Battery to get into the back lines, you're pretty much instantly going to be blown up and do absolutely nothing. Right. Um, oh, Bengi knocked it. There's a send out coming down immediately. Mandu with the ultimate as well. He gets the knock up onto Space. There's the Cataclysm. Space does get away with the Flash and the Valkyrie. So many low members there. Mandu picks up that kill. Baker got one as well. A double kill, in fact, for Baker. Another successful team fight for SK Telecom, and that's just going to be how it's going to be for the next few minutes until SK Telecom wins. Yeah, and Beggy now on the pursuit. Shy, flashing oh, out, but it indeed. won't be enough. Biglet will pick up that kill after some help from Faker. Yep. About Templar somewhere, maybe feeling a little bit bummed out. Oh boy, excuse you, Gragas. <laughs> Oh, well, SK Telecom certainly looks on form. They didn't take yeah, they, any breaks okay. after winning a million dollars. I guess so. They came back here. They need more. They just invested into, like, bionic implants for their fingers <laughs> so they can play, like, 20 hours a day now instead of just the 14 they were playing before. Jeez. Yeah. Guess what? DFG now complete for Faker. The slaughter will only get worse from here. That's right. May just want to, you know, take the small children out of the room, guys, because this is going to get pretty gory pretty soon. Uh, I don't even know what to say, Della. Well, I mean, there's really nothing to say. I mean, it's just uh, SK Telecom, you know, things SKT does. It's, it's beyond things Faker does. I mean, yeah, he's great, but really this entire team is what got them that world championship and we're seeing again exactly why that is. Yeah, the other issue they're dealing with right here is that there's no one that can stop Apex or push at this point either. Right. Shy is simply too weak at this point in time. Another dragon going over. Yep, 13 to 1, the kill score. Just because there can never be too many nails in this coffin. That's right, why not, man? I mean, you never know, because what if they decided to play like Mundo or Scion or something? Then you need to have that coffin nailed shut as the undead's getting out. It's not good. Then Faker has to play Lux or something. So did you know uh, the Chinese WCG qualifiers happened a oh, couple yeah. days ago? We yeah, can talk about that, that for a little bit. Uh, WE and OMG, uh, China will have two teams since they are the host country. Yep. And uh, Messiah, WE, uh, he was getting bans for Scion because he's been playing a lot of really? mid Scion recently. Interesting. Huh using that targeted stun and AOE burst with heavy roaming to great effect. Yeah, I guess you could. Another one of those strange things that some of the Chinese teams do sometimes. They always come up with some pretty creative picks. Things China does. It's a Chinese team do. I gotta say though, I, I am gonna miss Tabe's Annie. Oh, was, well, we've been seeing a lot of support Annie uh, in this tournament from Korea too. Yeah, I think we're gonna see a lot more of it overall. Not gonna be topping, though. There's the two shot Bros coming through. They're gonna almost brush die right now. They'll take him out immediately. Helos gets the assault battery onto Piglet. Piglet backs off. There's the Shen Ultimate coming in. And a huge knockup from Mengi. A triple kill already for Faker. Impact denies the Quadra in space. Valks away. He will escape. 
but just yet another massive team fight win. Baker enjoying himself. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have fun driving my Rolls Royce home from this. <laughs> Well, Faker at 19 minutes into this game is a staggering <laughs> eight, zero and two. And right in that team by two, you can see what I was talking about with Vi. Piglet got hit. Oh, goodbye, Space. Oh, never mind. Hello, Space. Piglet got hit by Assault and Battery, but it really didn't matter because Vi immediately <laughs> melted to Faker. This is what happens if you get behind on Vi. Yep. It is a risky pick. Can create a lot of plays, but if you don't make those plays, well, it's hard to be relevant in that late game. So true. And the ward shows CJ that they're losing even harder. There goes their blue buff, or red buff, rather. Let's take a look at that again. So let's yeah. take it right now. You're going to see Piglet get hit by that assault and battery coming in. Oh, there we go. There it but it just doesn't matter. He took too much poke. Mondu doing some nice zoning, gets that Zyra ultimate up under the turn. Baker coming in from the side with the DFG for the triple. Nearly gets Mad Life as well. Impact Man just to sneak that one away though, and Space will Valk out of yep. that Cataclysm. They were definitely trying to give. Well, Helios just died. That's kind of what happens. And uh, they do try to take out Faker. They actually almost get him. Rapid Star chasing. There's the Tether Faker. Can he one v one him? It'd be amazing. There's the charge. Rapid Star trying to get in. There's the barrel. Faker gets out with the W. He's fine. Meanwhile, Piglet takes down Mad Life. Space on the run as well. Rabbitstar continues to chase Faker across the map because Why not? needs that bounty. Piglet with the double, double kill. kill. And Rapid Star does recall. Faker's going to recall as well. Needs a bit of health. Shy finally deals some damage to that top lane turret, but at this point, it doesn't make a bit of difference, guys. It really, really doesn't. I'm pretty sure SK Telecom is just trying to break the will of Frost at this point in time. Well, one tactic we do see in this from time to time is that if a team is really ahead, they will try to stretch the game out. They'll try to fatigue their already mentally fatigued opponent. That can cause them to go on tilt. It can cause uh, you to be able to win even harder. So yeah, I mean, SK Telecom, definitely one of the best teams in the world at closing out games. But in this particular game, yeah, we can see them stretching out a little bit increasing the agony, the agony of the CJ Frost, I guess, today. All right, Observer was pointing out the gold difference between supports earlier, and we're really seeing that come into play right now. Mondu has about 4,000 more gold than Mad Life in this game, yeah. and that translates, of course, directly to the vision that we're seeing on the map from SK Telecom right now. Yep. Buy a lot of words that That'll be an uncontested Baron while Impact Goes ahead and continues to keep the pressure on with the split push. No turret in that bottom lane. Naked in him, going to be taking some shots. Yep. Get a and Shen is just uh, doing his calisthenics because it's good to stay limber. You know, <laughs> all right, right, now I'm ready to kill that. He limber. needs to be right. extra flexible for Stan United. <laughs> right. When you stand very still, it's, you need a lot of flexibility for that, I guess. I don't know. 34 is not even done yet for Giant. 22 minutes. Thank you coming in. There we go, the Cataclysm. Looked like the triple jump event from like my sixth grade track and field that means, but it just means death for Shy. And there goes the inhibitor. Baker. Trying to take some chunks out of space before he runs away. Mondu zoning out 1v4 because Mondu's a boss like that. Oh man, nearly catching space there. And say goodbye to another inhibitor. CJ Frost gonna lose their second one here. I mean, SK Telecom has been closing out this game beautifully. Everything yeah. they've done has been so methodical. They never took their lead for granted. They never overextended. They never really gave Frost a chance to come back into this one. Whoops. And yeah. now they're just on the hunt for every inhibitor, one after another. A textbook close here. Good discipline from SK Telecom T1 coming in. Oh, Shy gets a bit caught. There we go. The Taunt coming in on the Shy as well. He's going to go down eventually. Zoom on Bengi. Gets a knock up on Helios. End space. Mad Life flashing away. Meanwhile, Assault on Battery on Baker in the back line. Baker actually gets taken out by Helios. That's a big shutdown, but it's a little bit too late as Helios is going to have a really hard time defending his Nexus. Whoa, Piglet going deep for the kill. But it doesn't matter. It looks like SK Telecom should still be able to close this one out. You know, Piglet taking a couple rockets from Corky throughout that match, but I'm pretty sure Ezreal's hairspray is strong enough to deflect any bombardment. So, no worries there. It was just a bounce from that killed him. There goes the Nexus. So, game number one.
easy, 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 easy game. For SK Telecom. Yeah, Shy and Mad Life are up right now, but they're not even trying to defend this inhibitor. They just no. want to move on GG. to the next game, and that'll be it. SK Telecom up.